is the Honda ADV 150 a good commuter bike? So enjoy the ride, folks, and good morning. All right, finally, we're off. So I've been telling you guys for a long time, well, when it warms up in the summertime, I'm gonna ride to work. So today's video is gonna be about, is the Honda ADV 150 a good commuter bike? Well, we're gonna put that to the test because I'm gonna actually go the same way that I do if I'm driving a vehicle now I'm not on the highway a lot but I am on the highway a little bit now I can go all the back roads to work and I would say 75% of the the way that I do go is probably back roads but there's a little stretch um, that I get on a highway I get on the, the, the bypass and then I get on the highway um, just for a little bit of time and I'm gonna do the same thing because just basically for effect to show you that yeah this this can ride on the highway and and of course I'm in America where people go 70 on the highway but it's doable uh, it is Friday June 2nd so yeah we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put this to the test this morning now right now I got to wear a kind of a little heavier coat because it's only like 50 uh, low 50s I think gets kind of chilly in the evening but guess what when I ride home tonight yeah 91 degrees so uh, again this has nice storage under the seat so that means I can put my my coat and stuff under the seat when I come home and I don't need saddlebags or anything so yeah people are just gonna have to wait uh, there's people that really really fly on these highways this is the exact way that I would go if I'm driving my vehicle just to give you an idea of my commute to work but there's gonna be a lot of bikers out today a lot of people on their bikes it's such a nice day this is a, a 129 and I'm not going to talk this route because you won't be able to hear me too much so enjoy the ride folks and good morning
in my shoe and I'm rolling down the highway with you yeah the big old sky is blue and all I want to do is keep rolling down the highway with you Okay, well, that was uh, that was the little stretch of highway that I do ride, and like I said, it's not far. Maybe what? Maybe uh, five miles or so. I don't know, but eh, I don't enjoy it because you couldn't tell from the video. But when I was hitting 65, 66, yeah, it was bouncing off that, um, you know, where you can't go any further. The regulator, whatever the the rule. Um, rollers and the pulley um, gear system you bounce it's almost like it feels like you're running out of gas because it just bounces that's the the limit on them pulleys I guess so you can't go any faster than about 65 66 I had it to 67 once you saw the highway that was um, the bypass they call it getting on to interstate 75 south which is a, a major interstate that runs north and south through the country I-75 you guys might have heard of it and even probably been on it at some point but yeah that's they'll 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 cook on that thing I people fly on that highway and I don't really enjoy um, I don't really enjoy it kind of smells like it's I don't know if that's my my bike and see another thing is um, this is a good commuter bike, but I, you have to be careful when you're riding on highways um, a lot because you don't want to ride this ADV 150 wide open for a long stretch of time where it's bouncing off that those pulleys and stuff because I don't know how quickly you're going to wear through things. I really don't know. If anybody knows, leave me a comment, but I don't think these things were meant to... Um, Oh my god, pothole figures. I don't think these things were meant to um, ride full throttle throttle at 60, 65, 66 miles an hour um, regularly, you know, for long stretches. And I don't like that feeling of where it's like bouncing, you know, just bouncing back and forth because it just, that's the max that it'll go. If you're considering like a 150 cc motorbike like the ADV 150 the PCX there's quite a PCX has about uh, there's a 160 cc but you're I don't know you might get uh, maybe up to 70 miles per hour but on this you know unless you do some upgrades with the pulley systems and stuff for the um, CVT transmission yep 66 is about max 67 if you're lucky but you're gonna have that uncomfortable bouncing feeling the whole time so needless to say it's doable I proved I just you know it, it's doable but it's not really you have no room for acceleration at all so if you got if you're trying to merge and you have to pick up speed 
braking fine, but if you, you know, there's some situations where you have to accelerate to get out of a jam, good luck. You're not going to have that luxury on this bike. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, if your commutes are going to be a lot of back roads, maybe do a stretch like I just did, uh, just a small stretch on the highway, you could probably get away with it fine. I just wouldn't want to drive an hour on this thing pure highway you know it just would not be enjoyable to me not only the wind factor the i mean the windshield does um a, a fair job i would say of blocking the wind but when you're up to that speeds you're still feeling it quite a bit okay but if you want a motorbike that gets 100 miles per gallon there you go you have to weigh the consequences when you're looking for any bike okay you, you got to understand the limits right so this this has limits with speed of course because it's only 150 cc now if you do ride any stretch of highway for more than 20 30 45 minutes um, if it were me I would probably consider going up a little higher in cc if i plan to ride this on a highway on a regular basis above 65 miles per hour and there's a lot of uh used motorbikes on the market that are gently used that you can get into with higher cc's very easily you know you could get a suzuki bergman or something and um that's just one example there's a lot of them out there that have like maybe 350 cc a lot of people make comments that they wish Honda would bring the uh, what is it the 350 or 360 cc Honda ADV to the US and I mean I agree that I think that would be very competitive with some of the other manufacturers out there so I don't know why they don't do that I really don't but Honda is Honda is actually uh, sells more motorbikes around the world than any other manufacturer honda does so there's a reason there's a reason that they don't bring the 350 to the united states it's probably supply and demand of course are they going to sell that thing and are they going to sell it a lot of quantities of those i don't know probably not Ooh, railroad yeah this is my exact route to work and I'm making good time I, and it's really not a big problem at all I don't really speed anyway when I ride a vehicle drive a vehicle I, I stay within the speed limit um, so you don't really I, it's not like I'm losing time to get to work I have plenty of time and I leave way early just to compensate for accidents traffic that's just me that, I've always been like that I'll get to an hour, uh, I'll get to work an hour before anybody just because and I don't mind it at all because I'm a morning person. I love mornings. <laughs> now, I can't keep my eyes open at night. And I go to bed like an old man at like 10 o'clock sometimes. But I do enjoy my mornings. I think mornings are the most peaceful, enjoyable thing you can um, experience on this planet. Mornings. Especially before all the crazies get up. So... If you have any questions, um, drop them in the comments below. And I'll, I'll do my best to answer them because I've had this um, ADV 150 for a couple years now. That, And believe it or not, this was the first time that I've ridden this to work. Um, it's always something where I can't do it. Either the weather or rain or I don't really necessarily want to ride this in the rain when I have a car, you know. But yeah, if you have any comments, like, and I get them throughout, you know, my video's been out there a couple years on all my different videos, so I get, I think the most, most common question is, it used to be anyway, can this ride on the highways? Yeah, it, it can. Legally, it can. Do you want to do it? That's up to you. <laughs> to me, I don't think it's enjoyable. I can deal with a little bit of stretch like that. But I follow some other channels where they re uh, regularly commute with their, their different motorbikes. And they spend a lot of time on the highway. 
um, and that's just a personal preference if that doesn't bother you that's great but I, I just I'm like a type of person where I just like the casual ride of this thing like more 45 and under you know like this the back roads I could do this all day long but riding on the highway is just it's it's a little more stressful to me because there's people that just are not paying attention and they're going 70 75 80 miles an hour and they're looking into their phones and that's why I always check my mirrors because I'm like I hope nobody's riding up on me and not paying attention because it you got a small narrow th um, visual plane here so a lot of people don't see you yeah when I was at that red light back there a couple miles ago and I couldn't tell if it was my bike or somebody else but I kind of smelled like a, a burning smell a little bit um, and that if if uh, if anything I think it might have been because I'm full throttle for 20 minutes straight bouncing off that limiter that roll uh, it's not really a limiter it's just the, the gear system the pulley and stuff it's just maxed out you know so you're bouncing off that and maybe that's causing some like burning smell or something inside I don't know uh, like I said first time I really have ridden it to work and kept it wide open like that for an experience a uh, period of time but this is great this is um this is the city of blue ash it's a really beautiful um community for like a lot of businesses is in blue ash blue ash ohio it's a very large area for businesses and there's there's homes and stuff scattered throughout the area but um it's a lot of corporations in Blue Ash. That's why, you know, after five o'clock on a weeknight, it's it's really quiet. And if you lived in Blue Ash, anybody does or ever have, you know that after the traffic leaves, after everybody gets off work work at five o'clock, it's um it's a ghost town, pretty much. Now, when I leave work, I'm going to also film the the route home. I'm not going to go the same route home. I'm going to go more back roads. Because Friday night traffic, people rushing to get home, yeah, I don't want to deal with that on the highway. And that's another factor. If you do commute, you have to understand your route. You have to understand your, your traffic patterns and your flow. And you have to understand um, all that stuff. Just take all that into consideration. I'm going to go over here take all that into consideration before you buy any motorbike okay because you want something that is going to be comfortable enjoyable and able to handle your um your route that's it what is the best bike for that whatever you choose i'll leave it at that there's if you stick with the major brands don't buy you know a chinese brand off the internet for a thousand dollars they're not gonna last you're gonna have problems with those all the time stick with your manu ma major manufacturers like Honda Toyota Toyota Honda um, Suzuki and then um, Yamaha you know there's all kind of different scooter type automatics out there if you're looking for an automatic now if you're gonna be uh, riding a manual bike and shifting and doing the clutch and all that man the sky is the limit there's millions and millions of choices out there even on the used market but if you like an automatic like this you do have limits but there's plenty out there so before I bought this thing and I share this story all the time before I bought this I knew exactly what I was getting into I knew what the top speed was I knew what I'd be using it for primarily I don't, I'm the type of guy that I don't buy on impulse, never. Unless it's a candy bar or something, right? But no, I don't buy on impulse, but sadly a lot of people do. They go into a showroom looking for a motorcycle and they're like, oh, this is pretty. I love the color. I'm going to buy it. And all of a sudden they're driving to work and like, this is, a, this is it. <laughs> this is the fast as it goes. So just do your homework. I always tell people, do your homework, research everything before you buy it. And even then, you still have to, you have to sit on it. Eh, let's go. Cool. You have to sit on them. You have to look at them in person, because pictures don't do justice. You're gonna have to feel it out. 
even if you can't if you don't have your license and the dealership won't let you test drive a motorbike it the least you can do is sit on it see how how much leg room you have you know just pretend it's yours because they all ride pretty similar it's not like they're drastically different now you're gonna you're gonna have power differences on certain cc's but at least if you sit on them you'll know if it's a good fit for your body type and then based on the cc's and the research you do then you can know how fast it goes but yeah dealerships won't let you ride or test drive a motorbike unless you have your endorsement so keep that in mind too well i'm getting close to work folks so i will end it here and then i will share my trip home with you and i hope this was useful but stay tuned for that here and before you know it it'll be five o'clock somewhere Well, good afternoon. The day has passed. Um, eight hours went by pretty quick, actually. We're a little busy today, so that's good. I like kind of when it's busy, but not insanely busy because time goes a little faster. So got done with work. Now it is probably 90 degrees out, so don't need the, <laughs> definitely don't need the coat anymore. Um, but you know, as long as you're moving and stuff, you get the wind factor it's not stifling hot but when you come to a red light or something you can definitely feel the heat and having the black pants on and stuff doesn't help should have brought a change of clothes but that's okay I, it only takes me like maybe 30 minutes to get home from where my company is but this is the uh, blue ash area of Ohio and I'm definitely gonna go back the the back roads home i'm not going to get on the highway because around here being a friday seems like fridays after work rush hour not a good mix to be on the highway because everybody's wanting to get home and start their weekend off and yeah i just don't want to get caught up in that rat race so i'm just going to take the back roads home and I won't have to get on the highway at all. I did it this morning just to kind of show the point of this video, which is the, does this make a good commuting, commuter bike? And it, it does. It depends though on, like I said earlier this morning, it really depends on the application, like what you're going to be using every day. If it's going to be highway, if it's going to be back roads, is it going to be a little mixture of both? Like this morning, I didn't have to be on the highway at all. But usually in the morning, since I leave so early, the traffic's pretty light still. And I'm only on the highway for maybe one exit. 
um, the bypass was a little different but as you saw this morning traffic wasn't bad really considering what it would be like now so it I think it is um, it would make a great commuter bike if you didn't have a, a very heavily highway use in other words if you're just if you have mainly back roads or open country roads or stuff where you're not having to go 65 70 miles an hour for like an hour that's going to be a little challenging because i didn't like bouncing off that 66 mark 67 mark because you feel like you're it feels like you're almost like running out of gas because it's a little jerking sensation and uh you, it's just not a comfortable feeling when you're going 65 miles an hour and you're hitting that that limit where it's bouncing off that pulley or bearings or whatever the correct terminology is and for the CVT the system you know didn't like that feeling too well so I kind of let off the throttle and I would cruise about 60 64 just so I wouldn't hit that that edge but this is a lot better where you just take your time and all back roads here. could go north on this highway which is interstate 75 but I'm not because of crazy traffic right now I'm gonna cross over it and go the back way but this is the exit that I came off of this morning heading the other direction and see the traffic down there I don't know if there was an accident but um, doesn't look good looks pretty uh backed up it's moving but that shows you how the highways are around here i don't want to get on that not something smoking <laughs> i don't know what the heck that is but you got something smoking up there good choice to go this way right definitely For somebody that kind of a more intimidated uh, about motorcycles and shifting and clutches and stuff you know maybe something like an automatic would be good for you because I mean I get it if you don't if you're kind of leery of riding a motorcycle and learning how to ride one I, I would still go through the course just because we had two or three females I think in the course that I did for the the riders course and they have they had never ridden a motorcycle either um so it's doable and they enjoyed it you know that's how you learn but i would still do the course even if you planned on like i said in the last video if you do plan on getting an automatic it's still nice to know how to ride a motorcycle it's not that really difficult as you would think it would be but a lot of um females would opt for like a bike like this like I had a comment the other day that is possibly thinking about a more of an automatic bike and that's fine because it's just twist and go look it's twist and go you don't have to worry about shifting your feet are flat on the floorboards down here and it's just such an easy machine to use and you got your left you got your rear brake on the left and your front brake on the right and when you stop you kind of just use a combination of both two to get the maximum force for stopping and that's about it so you twist to go and you use both brakes to stop 
kind of in a gradual motion and you're good to go it, does, it really honestly doesn't get much easier than that and i think once once people ride an automatic like this even if they came from a motorcycle more of a standard shift motorcycle it's hard uh, a little weird to get used to the the left lever here being the back brake that get because usually it's on the right side on the floor for your rear brake so that gets a little um little confusing the people at first but after they ride it for a little while they get the hang of it pretty quick and it's not like it's rocket science or anything but it, a lot of them say hey that was actually a lot of fun it's really you don't have to think about anything you just twist and you come to a stop you don't have to worry about putting it in neutral or keeping the clutch in when you stop and i, I would say especially especially heavier traffic that's awesome so you don't have to worry about the clutch all the time you know so if, if you're in heavy traffic that's when it's nice to have a twist and go because you you're not always constantly juggling the the uh, clutch you know God damn it, they got the road closed. Well, everybody, thanks for the ride along today for my daily commute to work and back. First time I ever did that, actually, and I know I've been saying I was going to do that for the last two years. Hey, I finally did it. I'm a man of my word. But now it just takes me a while sometimes. So, yeah, finally made it. It, it took a while because I ran into that road closed thing I wasn't even aware of, so I had to do a little bit of backtracking. I probably lost maybe 10 minutes out of the deal so not too bad i left my company right around 5 and it is 5 48 so i would say if i didn't hit that road closure like i said maybe about 35 minutes so not too bad so thanks again everybody make sure you leave a comment with any questions about this bike and i'll be do i'll be back to bring you guys more stuff as you know